Last season, Tyrese Halliburton had an absolute breakout year, which I kind of feel like as fans, a lot of us saw coming as he's progressively gotten better each and every season of his career, both between his time in Sacramento and here in Indiana. And in theory, if you really pay attention to his game, he is like the perfect type of point guard. He's a blend of almost any type of point guard imaginable. Let me explain. We always talk about the difference between quote unquote true point guards and scoring point guards, which is more of a modern development in the NBA. Halliburton is like the ultimate combination of both a high level playmaker and floor general who also has a ridiculously deep scoring bag with his ability to finish in the paint and his lengthy shooting range both off the dribble and off the catch. People don't really understand and fully grasp how unique of a point guard he is. He's not just a true point guard with solid scoring abilities just like he's not an elite scoring point guard with solid playmaking abilities. He is prolific at both of those things and there aren't a lot of guys like that. John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, Derek Rose, Jason Kidd. If we look at those guys, they are more of one thing and a little bit of the other. But Tyrese is the perfect hybrid of both a score first minded point guard and a pass first point guard. So last season, his numbers were super impressive. He put up 20.9 points per game, along with 10.9 assists on solid splits, making 47% of his shots and draining 36% of his threes, which is a bit below his standards as he's been pretty much around 40% his whole career. But that's still an above average percentage from downtown. And he was able to to lead the Pacers to the conference finals for the first time since the Paul George era, which I was a bit surprised about. I didn't think they had the chops to be a team to make it that deep in the postseason, but that kind of speaks to how wide open things are in the league and how the playoffs kind of are like a free-for-all at this point. Now, things could have been different for them if the Bucks didn't have their health issues as Dame and Giannis both missed big parts of that first round series, but you have to give credit where credit is due. The Pacers executed the right way and got to that level. And even with them looking outmatched and losing in the East finals to the Celtics, there is a ton of hope for their future after there was a lot of uncertainty about their direction for a while after the Paul George era. There was a stretch where they had guys like DeMontis Sabonis and Victor Oladipo where they were solid but not good enough to get past the first round. Since moving Sabonis and getting Halliburton to kick off their rebuild, they've been moving in the perfect direction. And one thing the Pacers front office knew when they got Halliburton was that in order to try to kick off a rebuild the right way, your top priority should be to find a really good centerpiece and that centerpiece should be a great offense an orchestrator on some level. So for most cases, I'm against trying to kick off a rebuild by trying to build primarily around a center because there's only so much a young center can do if they don't have great playmaking around them. Some guys may not be able to get them the ball at the right spots, which could stunt their development. I think Alex Saar, for example, is going to suffer a bit from that in his first season here with the Wizards. But Indiana went in the right direction by trading for Halliburton, who at that time played a lot of off-the-ball roles for the Kings while playing alongside with De'Aaron Fox, but still was one of the elite playmakers of his draft class and he's been just that since joining Indy as he's never averaged under 10 assists through two full seasons with the team and judging by his momentum at this point in his career I legitimately think that we're at a point where Halliburton is ready to be a consistent MVP contender over the next few years every player reaches that point where they're always going to find themselves in those league MVP debates on a consistent basis Luka's at that point Giannis was at that point Jokic is at that point and we just saw SGA get to that point last season and I think Halliburton is next up in that conversation. What he did with the Pacers by leading them to the East Finals was a sign that Indy will be one of the cream of the crop teams in the East for a while. Like right now, if we look at things, there is a new elite upper class of the Eastern Conference and the Pacers are right in there and he's the face of that squad. And just judging by his numbers, he's done everything at this point to make us believe that he's ready to be that type of guy. He's got all of the leading qualities to give us faith that he'll be in that conversation this coming season. For one, he's shown us that he can create significant storylines for a significant part of the season. Earlier last season, before the All-Star break, especially around the in-season tournament, Tyrese Halliburton was the guy. He had some of the most iconic clutch moments and games out of any point guard up to that point. His consistency was a bit in question, and he did end up falling off a bit in the end of the year, but at least he showed us that when he has it going, his upside is that of a top 10 player in this league. Yes, in my opinion, early on in the season, especially around the in-season tournament, if we pause things right there, Halliburton was playing like a top 10 player in the league. And as I said, consistency is going to be everything for him. I mentioned it earlier. He did have a bit of a fall off by the end of the season, but I think we'll have that down pat this coming year. And he's also shown us that he can actually lead his team to real success. A lot of players don't really enter MVP conversations unless we know that they can actually lead their teams to some sort of playoff success. So for example, Lucas started heavily getting in MVP conversations really after like his 
second season when he showed in the bubble that he is a top tier level playoff performer as he lit up the Clippers defense in that first round. By the time Jokic won his first MVP award, he had already led the Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals, showing us that he's just inches away from getting his team over the hump. So you're not going to get that MVP love until you've shown that your play can actually translate to winning. And last season, Halliburton's play translated to win for the Pacers, both in the regular season and in the playoffs. Well, I'm really excited to see what Halliburton does this coming season for the Pacers, and the hope for him is twofold. For one, we'd want to see him follow up on the success he had last season for the Pacers and show that they can be consistent and that what they did last year wasn't just some one-off thing. Also, secondly, it's about his consistency the entire way through. I talked about it before. I'll say it again. The issue with him last season was that he got off to a red-hot start but just couldn't maintain it. Doing it through the entire 82-game season is going to be huge. But like I said, Tyrese has given us reason to trust his development and improvement from a year-in and year-out basis. So I'm excited to see what he has in store for us in the 2024-25 season.